Continuing with our effort to prove statements that involve quantifiers in both the assumption and the conclusion, let's look at another slightly more complicated example. In this example, we're going to prove for all values of x and y in the real numbers, if for all values of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, a is less than y, then there is at least one value of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y for which x is less than b. Note that the closed interval from negative infinity to x denotes the set of real numbers that are less than or equal to x. Similarly, the open interval from negative infinity to y represents the set of real numbers that are strictly less than y. For practice, we're going to prove this statement in two different ways. First, using a direct proof, and second, using a proof by contraposition. To begin, since we're proving this statement is true for all values of x and y in the real numbers, we need to let x and y be arbitrary real numbers. Next, if we're using a direct proof, we need to assume the full antecedent of our conditional statement. This means our assumption is the full statement for all values of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, a is less than y. Our job is then to demonstrate the consequent of our conditional statement. This means the statement we're trying to demonstrate is the full statement there is at least one value of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y for which x is less than b. We'll notice that since the statement we're trying to demonstrate includes an existential quantifier, we're going to need to use the principle of existential generalization. Recall that this means if we want to prove there is a value of b that satisfies this inequality, we need to give an example of a value of b that satisfies that inequality. This means we need to include a line that says let b equal some specific value. As always, the difficulty here is trying to figure out what value of b we should assign in order to get the inequality that we're looking for. To figure out what value of b we should assign, let's get out a scrap piece of paper. Looking at our assumption, it tells us for all values of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x that a is strictly less than y. If we view the real numbers as a number line and we place x somewhere here, what this is saying is that if we look at any value of a on this side of x, to the left of x, then y will be to the right of that. And since this is a closed interval, it's going to include x itself. This seems to mean that y must be somewhere to the right of x. What we're trying to figure out is whether there's a specific value of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y, meaning on the left-hand side of y, for which x is less than b. The question is, what value of b do we assign? Knowing that the value of b has to be to the left of y, and we want it to be to the right of x, it makes sense that we're looking for a specific value that's somewhere between x and y. The simplest choice would be to choose the value halfway between x and y, which is the average of x and y. Let's see if we can get this to work. Returning to our proof, we're going to assign a value to b, that is x plus y over 2. We now need to show that this value of b is in the proper interval, which means we have to show that it's less than y, and we also have to show that the value of b is greater than x. Now, our reasoning for this hinged on the picture that we had on our scrap paper that showed x was less than y. Let's see if we can extract this information from our assumption. Our assumption is that for all values of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, a is less than y. Since this assumption includes a universal quantifier, if we want to use it, we need to use the principle of universal instantiation. This means we need to talk about a specific value or multiple specific values of a. To get the information we're looking for, which is that y is to the right of x, it makes sense when choosing a specific value of a to talk about, we should choose the value x, because after all this is a closed interval which includes the value of x. We can then say, since x is an element in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, our assumption applies to x, and so we get the conclusion x is less than y. Still, with this information, we need to demonstrate that the value we've assigned to b is both less than y and greater than x. To work out a demonstration, let's go back to our scrap paper. At this point in the proof, we know that x is less than y, and we've assigned a specific value to b being the average of x and y. We also know that we need to demonstrate two inequalities. We need to demonstrate that b is less than y, which will prove that it's in the open interval from negative infinity to y, and we also need to demonstrate the inequality x is less than b. In other words, we're trying to show that the value of b we've selected is between x and y. 
We've done this sort of demonstration before. The way it works is we can start with the inequality x is less than y. And on the one hand, we can add x to both sides, giving us 2x is less than x plus y. And on the other hand, we can add y to both sides, giving us x plus y is less than 2y. We can then multiply both sides of each inequality by the inverse of 2. Doing this to the first inequality will give us on the left-hand side simply x, and on the right-hand side the expression x plus y over 2, which is the value of b that we've assigned. Looking at our second inequality, multiplying both sides by 2 inverse gives us on the left-hand side x plus y over 2, which again is the value of b, and on the right-hand side simply y. These are exactly the two inequalities we're looking for. Let's return to our proof. At this point in the proof, we've already demonstrated that x is less than y, and so following what we did on the scrap paper, we can add x to both sides on the one hand, and add y to both sides on the other hand. Multiplying both inequalities by the inverse of 2 gives us, on the one hand, x is less than b, and on the other hand, b is less than y. We can now say since b is less than y, it's in the open interval from negative infinity to y, and so we've shown by example that there is at least one value of b in the interval from negative infinity to y that satisfies the inequality x is less than b. Since this is the consequent of the conditional statement we were trying to prove, all that remains is to make our conclusions. Let's now try to prove the same thing using a proof by contraposition. Again, letting x and y be arbitrary real numbers. If we're using a proof by contraposition, our assumption has to be the negation of the consequent of our conditional statement. This means our assumption is, for all values of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y, b is less than or equal to x. The statement that we're required to demonstrate is the negation of the antecedent of our conditional statement. This is, there is at least one value of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, for which y is less than or equal to a. Here we can notice that the statement we're required to demonstrate includes an existential quantifier. And remember, to prove any statement with an existential quantifier, we need to use the principle of existential generalization, which means if we want to prove that there's at least one value of a with this property, we need to give an example of a value of a that has this property. This means we need to include a statement that says, let a equal something specific. Again, the difficulty is knowing what value of a we should assign. To help us figure this out, let's get out a piece of scrap paper. In this case, our assumption tells us that for all values of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y, x is greater than or equal to b. In other words, if y is here, then for every value of b to the left of y, x is going to be greater than or equal to that value of b. This tells us that x should be somewhere to the right of y, or possibly x might be equal to y. In any case, our assumption should allow us to show that x is greater than or equal to y. What we're trying to prove is that there is at least one value of a in the closed interval from negative infinity to x, for which a is greater than or equal to y. In other words, we're trying to show that there is at least one value of a that is to the left of x, possibly including x itself, and we want that value to be greater than or equal to y. Well, if our assumption does in fact allow us to show that x is greater than or equal to y, then simply choosing the value x for a will give us what we're looking for. Let's return to our proof. The specific value for a that we're going to assign is the value x. Now we need to make sure that it's in the right interval, which it is because since this is a closed interval, it includes the value of x. And so we have that our value of a is in the closed interval from negative infinity to x. We now have to show that this value of a, which is x, is greater than or equal to y. In other words, we're trying to demonstrate the inequality x is greater than or equal to y. We should be able to get this from our assumption, but to do so, since our assumption includes a universal quantifier, we're going to need to use the principle of universal instantiation. Let's return to our scrap paper. Our assumption tells us that for all values of b in the open interval from negative infinity to y, x is greater than or equal to b. We're trying to prove that x is greater than or equal to y. Using the principle of universal instantiation, we're allowed to choose whatever value of b we want. This means for any value of b we can think of that is in the open interval from negative infinity to y, we'll be able to conclude that x is greater than or equal to b. And we're doing this in an effort to show that x is greater than or equal to y. The difficulty here is that this is an open interval, which means it doesn't include the value y itself. 
If it did, this would be a lot easier. We could just say, since y is in this interval, x is greater than or equal to y. However, the fact that y is not included in this interval means we're going to have to work a little bit harder. One way to think about this is to imagine what would happen if x were not greater than or equal to y. In other words, what if x were less than y? If that were the case, we'd be able to choose a value of b midway between x and y, and that value of b would belong to the open interval from negative infinity to y, and yet it would be to the right of x, which means it would not be less than or equal to x, as our assumption says it should be. This suggests that perhaps, at this point in the proof, an argument by contradiction might be in order. Let's return to our proof. At this point, we've assigned a value to a, and we know that that value is in the right place. It's in the closed interval from negative infinity to x. Our job is now to demonstrate that for this value of a, y is less than or equal to a. In other words, we're trying to demonstrate that y is less than or equal to x. If we're going to demonstrate this using contradiction, what we need to do is assume that this is not the case. So let's include a line that says suppose our inequality does not hold. Suppose, on the other hand, that this value of a is less than y. This would give us that x is less than y. We're now looking for a contradiction. Let's go back to our scrap piece of paper. Since we're now operating under the assumption that x is less than y, and we still have the assumption that for every value of b to the left of y, the value of b should also be to the left of x, we can come up with a contradiction by choosing to talk about a value of b that is to the left of y but not to the left of x. In other words, we can choose to talk about the value of b that is halfway in between x and y. Let's return to our proof. At this point in the proof, we know that x is less than y, and so adding x to both sides on the one hand and adding y to both sides on the other hand, we get these two inequalities, one saying 2x is less than x plus y, the other saying x plus y is less than 2y. Multiplying both sides by the inverse of 2, we get on the one hand x is less than the average of x and y, and on the other hand the average of x and y is less than y. The fact that the average of x and y is less than y tells us that the average of x and y is an element in the open interval from negative infinity to y. Using the principle of universal instantiation, we can go back to our assumption and say since we now have an element in this interval from negative infinity to y, we know that for this element, x should be greater than or equal to it. In other words, our assumption allows us to conclude that the average of x and y is less than or equal to x. However, this is troublesome because we've just shown exactly the opposite. We've shown that x is strictly less than the average of x and y. Since we've contradicted the assumption that a is less than y, we can now conclude that y must be less than or equal to a, which is the inequality we were trying to demonstrate. At this point, we've shown that for the specific value of a that we've assigned, that value of a is in the proper interval, and it satisfies the inequality that y is less than or equal to a. This allows us to make the conclusion that if our assumption holds, then our conclusion holds, and writing this in its contrapositive form gives us the conditional statement that we were trying to prove.